galaxy's too big to be stuck in the same place. Sorry, I plain forgot what I wanted to talk with you about. <sighs> that girl. If Cora leaves her tools out one more time... I mean, I love her more than life itself, but I can only say the same damn thing so many times. Uh, that's Cora to a T. I mean, this is between me and you, but Cora wasn't exactly planned. I don't know if I mentioned, but I served a spell in the Freestyle Rangers. Had a partner, Lillian Hartz. Well, we were like fire and ice, but, uh, well, that wasn't all bad. She's one of their top rangers, so they keep her in the field a lot. And that's how she likes it. Well, it wasn't by choice. It was a lousy fit. Maybe someday I'll get into it. I'm just happy I found Constellation. Best damn organization in the settled systems, you ask me. It wasn't always like it is now. Hell, when Cora was born, I was completely out of my depth. For the first few months, I kept thinking, what a colossal mistake I made. Me, a father. But one late night, early morning, whatever, little Cora gave me my first smile. And I knew I'd do anything for that girl. Well, Mrs. Lillian Coe was right there with me. As bad as I had it with nursing at all hours, I know I had it comparatively easy. But that don't mean those first few months were good by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, sure don't feel like it. You said Cora's great, and I think so too. But I see so much of myself in her. I've, uh... I've done things I'm not proud of. I <laughs> said things even worse. I try to be better for Cora, but is she gonna fall into the same traps? Well, it's bad enough. Let me put it that way. And that's the truth there. I know it seems crazy, towing her across the stars, but I'm not exactly swimming with options here. Her mother... Like I said, another story another time. And what, have her raised by Jacob, my dad? I'd sooner ship her off to Vladimir. No, not really. Lillian and me don't have any siblings. We'd have to start looking into really extended family for other relations. And I wouldn't... I wouldn't want to anyway. Looking after Cora... That's not something I want to pawn off on someone. You think? Well, she does say the damnedest things. And if she just learned to pick up after herself, she just might live until she's 13. Uh, when the time's right, I'd appreciate a chat. Late at night in dive bars. Sometimes the old timers share stories. About things they've seen that they just couldn't explain. Ghost stories, if you will. I've heard of things like the Starbone before. But they're real. Honest to God, real. But you carry on for centuries of exploration, and you can fool yourself into thinking you got it all figured out. Clearly we don't. So the obvious question is, what the hell are they? Everyone's gonna be thinking aliens, but maybe not. Their ships were incredible, but they still felt like ships. They had engines, weapons, I think I even made out a grav drive. If they were really alien, I would just expect it to be more 
alien, you know? I mean, it could be some secret Freestar Varun or UC tech, but I don't know. I mean, anything's possible. But if someone, anyone, had that much of an edge on the others, the whole balance of power would shift, right? It'd be one hell of a conspiracy to keep it quiet. An even greater amount of restraint to keep it in your back pocket. Anybody that says they know for sure, are lying. I'm gonna throw in another wild stab in the dark theory. Maybe they're from outside our known systems. Here's the hypothetical. Centuries ago, some brainiac scientists decide to play settler. But they go way, way beyond any place we've ever been to set up stakes. Once they get there, they make a few lucky breakthroughs, and their science just snowballs from there. I can see them getting further, faster, and hence, become the Starborn. How non-committal of you. One way or the other, we are not alone. And that's... <laughs> that's both exciting and terrifying. I must confess, the hum of a grav drive makes me feel alive. Take it easy. I wanted to talk to you, but honestly, I don't know where to begin. The Starborn's technology is simply astonishing. It's just almost too much to process. Of course not. No one has. If an encounter with this level of importance had occurred in the past, I assure you that Constellation would be well acquainted with it. Yes, <laughs> I suppose I am. But you can hardly blame me, can you? You do understand the significance of this encounter, don't you? This is humankind's first contact with what I believe is an alien race. A race with technology that could be far superior to our own. Oh, we could learn so much from them. The way they behaved, I'd say that's not very likely. If we are to learn anything from the Starborn, we're going to have to take the initiative ourselves. I wouldn't say I was afraid. More like approaching the situation with caution. Can't be a coincidence that these Starborn suddenly appeared after your experience at that temple. We know they're here to lay claim to the artifacts, but what's their true motivation? What aren't they telling us? It's very disturbing, especially with all of that cutting edge technology at their disposal. Damn. Oh, if only we knew more about the Starborn. What their species is like, where they're from, how they're able to speak our language. I feel like a cadet on my very first day aboard a spaceship. My mind is absolutely swimming with questions. Obviously. But there has to be more to these beings than simply originating from another world. Their name alone, Starborn. There's some type of hidden meaning there. Something that feels very old. Perhaps even ancient. Whatever the case may be, I can assure you that Constellation intends to get to the bottom of this mystery.
Hmm, I'm not really sure. Scientifically speaking, we're all born from the stars. Most of the chemical components of our body, carbon, oxygen, sulfur, are exactly the same as those manufactured by internal stellar reactions. Now, ask someone like Matteo the same question, and he'd probably give a more theological answer. But hey, it's all a guessing game anyway. Exactly. We must use all of the tools at our disposal to learn more about the Starborn and their connection to the artifacts. I'm grateful you feel that way. And don't worry, I promise to be careful. You know, it's funny. When I was a little girl, I'd lay on the ground and stare up at the stars. I was absolutely convinced they held a secret. I'd remain there for hours in silence, eyes closed, listening, waiting for the secret to be whispered in my ear. This encounter with the Starborn is that moment to me. The stars are finally whispering, and I need to hear what they have to say. Hmm. Although I'm flattered that you think of me that way, there's a time and a place for that sort of talk. This is definitely not one of them. Well then, I've certainly wasted enough of your valuable time. Just do be careful if you cross paths with these Starborn in the future. I wouldn't want to lose one of the most valuable members of Constellation. Hey! How are you? Did you need something? Never would I have imagined to encounter something like the Starborn. Now I feel that rather than having answers, we only have more questions. Yes, by any meaning of the word. Regardless of how impossible they may have seemed before now, I must say that I do not like being threatened by anyone. If so, what would that be? Clearly, these Starborn are connected to the artifacts, which would mean that they are also connected to that temple you found. Did they make these things? Have they appropriated them? This all implies there is something more, something we do not yet understand. Yes, given our first interaction with them, that seems likely. We will need to be on our guard from now on. They seem to know much about us. Perhaps we can learn more about them to make it even. We should return to our search then. There is still so much to do. Neon's got nothing on New Atlantis. Exploration still lives as long as the lodge is still standing. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Well, I have to talk about the Starborn. Do you have a second? You do, right? It was awesome right how could we not talk about it for the rest of our lives 
it could be the dawn of a new era of humanity. Or it could be an elaborate prank or any number of mundane explanations. Well, they were definitely unusual, but aliens seem so inhuman, obviously. I just have so many questions. We just need more data. There has to be a way to draw them out and figure out where they're coming from. It's one of our few facts about them. It seemed very important to them, too. This could be a turning point for humanity, you know? Or it could be just the emergence of a powerful new faction or some sort of elite military tech or a gazillionaire with nothing else to do. All we know is that they wanted that artifact badly. Agreed. That is going to require more observations, more encounters with them. And who knows? Maybe we'll never see them again. Hey, Captain. Can I talk with you for a bit? Hey, so I'm really enjoying our time together. Thought you should know. It's been a long time since I worked with someone so closely. I didn't realize how much I missed it. And you haven't stopped me from looking into this stuff with Irvin either. So, thank you. See, that's what makes you a good captain in my book. You're supportive. On that note, I do have some news about Irvin's case. So, I wanted to let you know that I heard back from my contact, and I think you'll want to hear this. They sent me a copy of some public records. It's interesting. There was a claim filed against Irvin, accusing him of damaging their investments. Looks like Irvin didn't even enter a plea. Some of Irvin's paychecks were seized, as well as any assets that weren't under joint ownership. The Hephaestus Mining Corporation, and they also won the case. Well, if it was Irvin, I do want to understand that because I just can't believe it. Anyway, this mining corporation, Hephaestus, sued Irvin, claiming he irreparably damaged their mine. They said he killed the apex predators in the area around the mine, which led to herd creatures overeating the grasses. That caused the soils to release too many gases too fast, which cost Hephaestus a ton of money. They claim the creature he killed was a critical hive species that caused a cascade effect when they were killed off. Irvin killed the equivalent of a queen bee, and the whole hive collapsed, basically. It looks like they considered him a no-show and ruled against him. So anyway, according to the court documents, there was a witness for the defense, who was a no-show too. Then Hephaestus won by default. They tried to take his apartment, but because it's in my name too, they couldn't. Yes, they plan to stay in the same system for a while. They withdrew their testimony the morning of the trial. Said they had a sincere change of heart. I didn't know he bought it. Must have been a better deal than renting for the time he was there. That doesn't mean we can't do anything about it. And if nothing else, I just want to know more about what happened to Irvin. So here's what I was thinking. I can persuade my contact to keep digging a little bit more. 
I don't want to press our luck, so I'll just ask them to follow up on one thing. Should I tell them to investigate the company more or look into the witness instead? For that much money, <laughs> they'll do it. You know, this investigation is time consuming, but it's also pretty cathartic. And who knows? Maybe if we solve this case, it'll mean a better future for Gagarin. But that's thinking too far ahead. Anyway, Captain, thanks for checking in with me. <laughs>